welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 46. Yay! So I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And we are trying something new. This We have the new camera and it's got a little thing where you can flip it around and see yourself. So it's a little distracting. So if we feel a little off, I'm sorry. We're going to try to see if this will work. Uh, we want to make sure that we actually are showing you stuff yeah, with the new camera. Yeah, we give it time to focus on everything. So um, if you hear background noise I have the window open because it is a lovely like 60 degrees outside today yep and it's the first time in a little bit that we've had that nice weather so if it gets too loud I'll close it but right now it's not bad um so we're at 828 members in our group from last week we had 798 so we are I love that we grow a little bit each week that makes <laughs> me happy that means we're still interesting enough that new people come in so we're interesting. We are. That's what I'm telling us. <laughs> That's what, you know, maybe people are just coming for the prizes. Who knows? <laughs> the fabulous prizes. So, works in progress. What do you know? I'm working on the sleeve of my Washington Square right now. It is we. It is we. It is on row seven. I know that because I'm using an app for my iPod called the Touch and Go. And it's called Knitting Touch and Go. And there's a lot of different row counters on oh that's not what i meant to do see now i can't do stuff we should be sponsored by them <laughs> there's a lot of different row counters on the ipod touch but i like this one even though it's a little bit more expensive i think it was 4.99 it does a lot more than row counting but the touch screen where you touch is nice and big so let me flip over to the blue when i touch it oh <laughs> it's a fail <laughs> it's nice and big there we go. And it makes it all click. That's what she said. Um, and I can easily switch where it is. And I like it. So there's my sleeve of the Washington Square. The body of the Washington Square is down is done to the armpits. And it looks like that. So that's 15 inches. Give or take some. <clears throat> So 15 inches. I worked on that during the Super Bowl last week and started the sleeve today. So I had a lot of knitting time this week because we were out of school for almost four whole days. Yes. We got, we worked two hours on Monday, worked all day Tuesday. Wednesday we went home at 12. Yeah, half day. Half day. Yeah, at noon. And then we're out Thursday and Friday because we had a snow yep. slash ice storm. And now it's 65. Yes. Welcome to the South. <laughs> so um, I got lots of knitting time in. Other things that are still on my needles. The Twisted Fiber Arts Socks in Ravelry. And they've grown a little bit. These are two at a time on two circulars. It's jabbed through. Oh, I stabbed my toe. And they look like... That's we. You're a lovely assistant. I'm trying. Today. I'm like pulling and twisting and <laughs> straightening. So uh, I worked on that a little bit. Um, that was going to be my portable work on as I go different places projects. But I think it's going to get replaced because it's not really that portable. It's kind of awkwardly not portable. Yeah, it's all right. And then the cupcake bag from Petal Loop, <laughs> remember how I had to take those out because they were getting too big, has been stuffed with a hat. I love that color. This is Cascade 220, and it is a test knit for Wendy Knits, and I'm just about to do the crown decreases. So I'm on the last chart and about to start that. And this was so, part of her winter of despair, uh -huh. desolate, I can't remember, something about sadness. Desolation, winter, because she broke her hand, but it looks like um, she seems to be knitting a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But like just plain stocking, stocking it. Mm -hmm. She can knit, so knitting in the round. And last but not least, if you're my swap partner for shawls and you don't want to be spoiled. spoiled, look away. My Ishbel has not really grown at all. I might have knit one row. It's very pretty though. Yep. So still on chart B. And this is out of the Casbah, right? Yep. I uh, have made in Casbah. It's pretty. And it's in my Pillow Witch with owls. 
so that's it for on the needles for me. Only four? <laughs> Only four this week. I finished a couple things, so, <laughs> you know. Um... I only have one thing on the needles actively right now. I do have another thing on the needles, but I'm, it's for a tutorial, so I'm not counting it. Plus, I haven't touched it in like two weeks, so <laughs> there's that. Uh, you got caught by the spinning bug, though. I did. I did. Um, I've my they put out the list yesterday. Uh, Lisa and Patricia put out the list on the group of who's knitting for who on the swap shawl. And uh, BFF of Wendy is who I'm knitting for. She already knows because we were talking on Gchat last night and she's like, I knew it was you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is both the people that Leslie and I got... Um, we ended up meeting like a week we later. We <laughs> that weekend and so, uh, hung out with them. So it was lots of fun. So this is the Pagona. This is what it looks like right now. This is out of uh, Woolmaza in Bluebell, right? Isn't that what I yep. said? So it is at about... Um, 12 and a half inches in the center and you have to go until it's 14 inches and it's a lot more fun when there's not as many stitches on the needle um, it's just right now it's you know it takes like half an hour to get across a row so it's kind of um, just kind of boring I think but it's so beautiful so you it's know pretty. I'm, I'm excited about finishing it and sending it off to Muriel yay and I got some good you know goodies to stuff in the package so that makes me awesome. happy as well that's my only active work in progress. That's what I'll be knitting on during the show. Um, I have an FO. It is a starving artist hat. And it is out of one of my very first things that I ever spun. And that was Tempted, I believe it was 100% Merino. It was 100% wool of some type. It could have been BFL. And it was called Positivity was the colorway. So I got the extra slouchy version. Cool. And now it's coming off because I'm hot. <laughs> but this is what the, it looks like closer. So I did the super slouchy version and I did it, well the slouchy beret version, whatever. And it I did it in about three or four hours yesterday because I did it, it's like ten and a half needles so it went super fast and it's a lot, lot better. Yeah, it's free. And it's free. And I think it looks exceptionally well in hand spun because, you know, you don't have to worry about color pools or repeats or anything like that. So, um... It is large and it will keep my head warm should we get another snap of like 10 degree weather. <laughs> we'll see. I've been in a hat mood this week. Yeah. Like knitting have. hat moods. Um, um, I have another yeah, FO. I was like, you have more FOs. I have one other FO. Um, I'm also cute. test knitting a pattern for Wendy. Well, I test knit a pattern for Wendy and they were mittens and they're also from her winter of desolation or desolate, whatever. I can't remember what the, the ebook is going to be called. It's going to have like six patterns in it. And these those are, are what so they look cute. Like. So I like those a lot. They're knit out of a DK weight yarn. And this was Elizabeth Lavold's, Lavold, whatever, silky wool. This came out really well. And I finished them, I want to say Friday. I think I did. And then I put them into block and wove in all the ends and everything. So they fit really well. They're right on with gauge. And they're actually pretty simple. I enjoyed knitting them. They went pretty quick. And you Kitchener at the top, and I love Kitchener. <laughs> so that is my other FO for the week. I like Kitchenering too. So what about, okay, you have FOs as well. You're I do. FO. I'm wearing a Starving Artist hat. I, um, the one that I made out of Vintage Chunky, I got a phone call on Wednesday. And someone at the yarn shop, someone went, it, it was up at the yarn shop. Um, because I was teach I'm going to teach a class on it this next Saturday, and someone off the street saw it, came in, said, hey, how much do you want for the hat? And they called me and asked me, and I sold it. So that's the perk of designing your own patterns. <laughs> yeah. You can sell the FOs. So I had to make another extra slouchy one, so I picked out some hand spun because I saw Karen's, and I really enjoyed hers out of the hand spun. And so... Here it is. This I'm thinking is um, Twisted Fiber Arts was the roving. It's super old and I actually knit this inside out, this one, um, which was great on my part because the um, when I spun this, when I plied it, I left like little dangly bits out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how um, whenever you try to hide those, they go to the front yeah. and because I knit it inside out. They're all in inside, so it worked out. <laughs> it worked out really well for me. 
But um, it was fun knitting it inside out. Basically all I did was anything that was a purl I made into a knit. Anything that was knit through the back loop I made into a purl through the back loop. So that's it. Um, first finished object. I knit this like Friday, Saturday, a little bit today. Actually this was my hey I'm on plurk and I'm reading other people's plurks <laughs> and knitting at the same time project. I tend to do that a lot. That's why I like to have one simple project. That became my simple project. Now I have to find a new one. Um, other things that I finished. I finished the single man cowl. Oh. I actually finished that last Sunday during the Super Bowl. Is there a pattern out for this yet? I am going to release it probably before this podcast gets out. Awesome. So this afternoon I made Michael take pictures. Leslie made Michael take pictures <laughs> of it on. And I love, I don't know if y'all have ever used the, um, I love it the um, Malabrigo Twisted before. This was my first time using it. It is so soft and squishy. And the other day I walked to Maggie with Kobe and I had it like... <laughs> like bank robber style. Yeah, bank robber style. All squished up and covering my ears and my face. And it was awesome. So, I love it. And it's staying with me. It's not going anywhere. place. Did it take the whole skein of Malabrigo nope. Twist? There was a, quite a bit left over. I'm going to say probably 10, 15 yards left over. So, squishy, my squishy. And this was inspired because we had a viewer ask about men's cowls, right? Yep. And so I designed it, and it's going to be up. Yay! And I took, I was smart, I took notes when I was um, knitting it actually on a Word, not Word, because I use Apple, but Pages document. <laughs> <laughs> a Pages document. <laughs> so, I just have to go through and edit it, and grammar is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and get it up. And then I also, this has been like the month of Malibrigu for me because I finished a Make It Work shawl. And I, it's beautiful and red, and I think it should be mine. Out of Malibrigu. It's so, lovely. It's nice <laughs> I was wearing it earlier. Yep. Yeah. And this took two skeins of the worsted. And it smells like soak. It does. Oh, it smells so good. And I blocked it already, woven all the ends, they're clipped, everything's perfect. So Laura was one of my, one of ten awesome test knitters that I had. So if you were a test knitter, I thank you very much. And I have sent all my test knitters a copy of the finished pattern. But it is now available for purchase on Ravelry. It's called the Make It Work Shawl, Shawlette. It's kind of a, more of a recipe than a pattern, but there are extensive notes and there's even... Video support. There is a video support in the pattern that links you exactly to how the short rows work and how to pick them up invisibly without them being noticeable later. So um, it's available on Ravelry for six bucks, so go buy it. <laughs> Commercial end. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, it was a lots lot of fun. of FOs this week. We had three FOs. Yeah, I was hoping for five because I was off five days <laughs> and that's why I told Leslie I texted her this morning um and I was like let's not record till two because I was really trying to get that cabled hat done but that didn't happen and I really I'm gonna cast on um a herbivore in pretty short order so I wanted to get that started as well oh so stitch but I haven't done it yet I want the yarn for it though you lost a stitch marker. Damn the man, I lost a stitch marker. That's okay. I always lose my, um, begin. Be a gen. Yeah, begin. There you go. I always want to say be a gen. I always lose these. But then I find them again. Yeah, it's in the sofa. I know where it is. It's in the cushions. <laughs> uh, so, spinning. Do you want to show yours? Sure. Like I said, I had essentially five days off this week. So, I got a lot of spinning so done. So pretty. So, this is Crown Mountain Farms in their Paul Worth blend. I think it's Jugendspiel is the name of the roving colorway. It's a lot of reds and yellows and grays. I have a pound of it because when they first came out with it they did a fantastic deal. It was like $24 or something per 8 ounces. So mom and I bought... 3 um, pounds, right? Yeah, around 3 pounds. We got a pound in two different colorways that are actually kind of similar that were reds. I mean, I'm trying to find the end. There we go. So I can show you all it. And um, then we got... Ooh, hello, Overspun. <laughs> then we got um, each a separate colorway of eight ounces. And I have like a really pretty purple as my separate one. And I'm really enjoying spinning the Paulworth. 
It was a new fiber, fairly new fiber to me this year, and I've enjoyed spinning it. So this is only the first four ounces, right? This is the first okay. four ounces. I used my scale to divide it. They have their roving kind of, um, when you get at least the Polworth roving, it's really small strips, and it's kind of put like a skein. So um, I wound it into like a big ball, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I could fit that big ball in my skein, and I just spun until I hit the four ounces on the skein, or in the big ball, and started spinning the next four ounces. I also applied the um, bat that sheds, mm -hmm. got three plied, it came out to around 160 yards, but it's soaking at the house. It was way overspun, okay. well, like have to super bring it next overspun, week. so I'll have to bring it next week, but I was like, I need to thwack that before I actually yeah. show other people. <laughs> So I've had many a skein that uh the stuff that I spun for Megan that I showed y'all a week or so ago was way overspun. It's set and it's lovely now, but my Navajo plies tend to be more overspun yeah. than the rest of mine. Um, so I spun as well. Last week we had a contest where you left a comment as far as voting for what you wanted me to spin out of three choices. And by the end of Monday, it was very clear what was the uh, favorite, of the crowd favorite, so to speak. And it was the Gale's Art Gumball, which was a 70% silk, 30, 70% alpaca, 30% silk blend. So Monday, I started spinning it. And uh, actually, it only took me a couple days to spin it. And I forced myself to wait a day before I plied it. And... Um, it is actually the most well-balanced yarn I've ever spun because even immediately taking it off the wheel, it didn't curl at all, it didn't twist, it was fantastic. So I got 282 yards of about a DK weight and this is what I it like looks like. I like your little tag. And yeah, I do have these little tags I got from Dawning Dreams on Etsy. Well, I got them at the uh, Arkansas Fiber Arts thing, but, but she, has them, on she Etsy. has them on Etsy. So this is what it looks like. And I want to thank y'all for voting because this actually is lovely. And I have <laughs> a gift recipient in mind for this. So, um, what are you going to spin next? I think I'm going to spin the Hello Yarn. That was the second choice uh -huh. of everybody. Um, and that was an informal me looking at it and kind of get, kind of gauging. Um, not many people like the gradient, actually, which was one of my favorites. But I think I'll spin the Hello Yarn Polworth next. And I might actually start that tonight. Uh, just as a break from the uh, Pagona. But this, it's really nice. It's kind of fuzzy. It does have a little bit of a halo, but pleasantly so. So this was my spinning for the week. And we picked a winner yep. for the contest. Uh, we had 131 entries. Holy cow. <laughs> Y'all like prizes. <laughs> and so we did a random number generator. I was going to do, we were going to do it like on camera, but there wasn't. Using the iPod Touch and it was going to be awesome. But there <laughs> wasn't really a way for us to say, okay, it was number 47. I'm going to have to count now through 47. You know, I didn't want to waste the time. So um, we picked it, ended up being number 53. The winner is Sheila. And the email address is csdung at yahoo.com. So if that's you, email me at you don't call me less at gmail.com and give me your address and we'll get this out in the mail at some point this week. Cool. So congratulations to Sheila. Thank y'all all for voting. Yay prizes. Yay. <laughs> I like giving stuff away. Um, favorite things. There are lots of new video podcasts. There are. We have, uh, and I, I say we, it's not us, but there are a lot of new video podcasts. Which is super cool. I love it because, you know, yeah, we're a video podcast, but we like to watch people too. So <laughs> uh, we have a thread in our group, the Pimp Yourself or Others uh -huh. thread, where I think most of the video casters have gone and, you know, put yep. a link to their show. So if you're looking for more video podcasts, you should go into our group on Ravelry and the Pimp Yourself or Others thread and, and just read through it because there are, I would say in the last month, there's got to be at least five or six new ones. Oh, yeah. And if you are a new vid video podcaster and have not pimped yourself in our group, you totally should. Mm -hmm. Or a podcaster in general. Or someone who sells stuff or makes stuff or does stuff. Or knows other awesome uh, stuff. Yes. Because we like to be enabled. <laughs> not that you can't tell that. Um, I especially enjoy pattern ena enabling. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful things, too. Oh, and don't forget. Okay, so that brings us to the spin-along. In the spin-along thread, we're still recommending patterns for the finished object of the, or the finished yarn. 
So be sure to go through there and vote for the ones that you like. You can vote for as many as you like. It doesn't matter. Just click agree on the ones that you think would be a good choice and we'll take the top five or ten most popular or whatever. We'll figure it out. But just go and vote for the ones that you like so we know cool. which ones are popular. And speaking of the spin along. We've sold lots. Well, we haven't yeah. sold. Stacy Stacey has done a lot of pre-orders. Yes, and she's very excited about <laughs> having so many people spin the same fiber to see I think so it's many be results. So cool. It will. It's going to be so different. You know, it's for anybody that hasn't done a spin along before, it's because you you all get the same thing, so you think, oh, it'll you know kind of look the same, but no, people do totally different yeah. stuff, totally different weights. Some people are more anal and divided <laughs> by color. I don't plan on doing that with this one. Um, some people do like are me and just spin it how it wants to be spun. And some like Navajo ply and some like two, two or three, or three ply, ply or, single or or four or singles would be cool. There's so much stuff out there. Yeah, and it will, it'll, it's amazing how different the same beginning product can look when you finish it so oh yeah if you're on the fence join in it's fun even if you're you know if you're a spindler who cares just join in it's and we've actually had a couple people who are, have never spun or used to spindle or anything and are like <laughs> okay i'll play <laughs> so. so that's fun and um if you're looking for good spindling videos there's a great dvd uh called respect the spindle oh yes put out by interweave there's also a book called respect the spindle there's tons of people who do awesome videos on youtube i know nitpicks sells um their spindle and they have some videos to show you how to use that there's lots of information not only on the web but there's some great videos out there and i'm sure we have some um indie not, I don't know if indie dyers is the right word, but indie folks in our group who sell spindles and spindle kits, yeah. I know that there are a few. So if that's you, go put yourself in the Pimp Yourself thread. Yep, definitely. So that our new people who are wanting to join in and get a new spindle for the first time have somewhere to go. Who knows? I might want their... a new spindle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much of a spindle spinner. I can operate it, but I'm, I much prefer a wheel myself just because... It goes faster. And it's easier to control. <laughs> In my opinion, it's easier to control what the um, the result's going to be. spindles are super portable, too. Oh, absolutely. So there's pros and cons for both. And method. it's a great way to start and see if you enjoy it before investing in a wheel. So, um... I've started hitting the iPod Touch with Flourish now. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Uh, okay, so let's start checking things off. We've talked about that. We've talked about that. You have a book to review. I do. I'm also increasing. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay, well, while you're doing that, then I will uh, talk about... I, I was buying a gift for my friend Jackie of the Kippin' It Real podcast. So Jackie, if you're watching this and you haven't received your package yet, then skip ahead a minute or two if you don't want to be spoiled. But so cute. my friend Carrie who has an Etsy shop that's called Jelby, J-E-L-B-Y, uh, you can search sellers for her, does the most amazing little felted stitch marker sets. They're and so cute. You can get it where it's just one like special felted stitch marker and then regular stitch markers, which are still absolutely beautiful. I agree. So I'm going to show you this one. And Jackie, my friend, is really into owls. So when I saw this set, I thought, oh, God, I have to get this for Jackie. So it's a little felted ball with hand, I don't know if you would call embroidered, it embroidered yeah. owls. And then it also comes with a set of like eight, six, sorry, six little cute matching little stitch coordinating markers. stitch markers. So again. So cute. She does sheep ones that are just adorable. Yes. I've got a little stitch marker from the Perfect Day yarn. It's not a stitch marker, a book uh, marker that has a little sheep on it. And then, because she had put an evil song into my head, Carrie did. And I'm not going to tell you what song, because then it'll be stuck in your head. <laughs> and I'm not cruel like that, like Carrie. Uh, she also, as a funny little gift, she sent a couple of extras. This is one of the little sheepies. <gasps> so cute! I love that I don't color know that too. you guys can actually see that or not. But it's a little embroidered sheepie. And I got a little... It, it's just, it goes to show how incredibly delicate her work mm -hmm. is. But this one is a little robin on a tree, a tree branch. branch. So, and they're very reasonably priced, and she's she, just a joy to deal with. She's super fun. And so, she's on Clark. She is, and she's in our group, and she's part of the Friends of Piddaloo group, and I think that's actually how I met her. Well, met. Yeah, that's how I met her. Um, she's outside of, well, she's in Tennessee. Uh -huh. I think she's outside of Knoxville. 
maybe. So if you're looking for a cute little gift for another knitter, like perhaps as a <laughs> swap gift for your shawl swap partner, I recommend checking out Jelby's shop. It's really cool. And, and I've loved her stuff ever since I got my bookmarker from the Perfect Day Yarns Sock Club. Cool. Now are you ready to review your book? Sure. <laughs> All right. Let me put down my sleeve. <laughs> that sounds so funny. Where did my book go? There it is. It's Hello. Hiding. This is one of my first books that I ever purchased. It's done by Interweave Press. It's called Scarf Style. It was the first in a series that they started. And it's so funny because it on the back it says, Up and coming knitwear designers, including Debbie Bliss, Nancy Bush, <gasps> Lily Chin, Nikki Epstein, Sally Melville and Kristen Nichols. So they were up and coming when this book came out. And there's a lot of cool people when in here. When was it published, just out of curiosity? So, let's see. The library knows exactly where to look. <laughs> 2004. Okay. So it was published six years ago. It was pre-Ravelry, about three years. Yep. So it's a really cool book. And it's not just one pattern. There's a lot of things I like about this book. It's got a whole pattern section, and then it's also got a design section in the back. But Leslie and I tabbed some stuff, as you can see. <laughs> We're tabbers. We didn't tab everything, believe it or not. Um, one of my favorite patterns in this book is the Here and There yeah, Cables pattern by Nora Gon. It is a reversible cables pattern. And it was done out of Reynolds Odyssey. But I would think that would be gorgeous and perhaps maybe a Malabrigu. How many yards does it call for? Um, 104 eight balls. Okay, so that's like 800 yards. 800 yards. I was so you're say talking it would look lovely four. in hand spun, but you need a little high hand spun. Yeah, it would be gorgeous in hand spun. But four balls of a 220 on size 7 needles. Kathy Zimmerman also has a guy's scarf pattern with bobbles, which we all know Leslie bobbles. loves. <laughs> Not just for women. Also for men. I like Kathy Zimmerman. She actually owns a shop in um, Pennsylvania. It's in, ooh, where is it? Did Eloise gonna remember. go to that shop? I've been to that shop, and I think Eloise I think was so too. too. Um, that's out of Jaeger Matchmaker. Merino double knitting, so it's a DK weight, five balls, 500, 600, 600 and some yards. Um, Pennsylvania's Forbes State Force was the inspiration for it, so she's very cool, and she's a local Pennsylvania designer, and she does a lot of cable stuff, and she's done a lot of stuff for Interwave. You wanted to talk about this one. Well, I found it interesting that a designer has paired cables, go up a little bit, with Fair Isle. So you, I guess you do either the fair isle first and then do the cables. I don't know, but I thought it was very interesting to do the two. I wasn't crazy about the tassels or the um, not tassels. They're tassels. Fringe. Okay, yeah, yeah, on the end. But I mean that's easily taken out. And, and that, that one's a, called Fair Isle Jazz by Mags Candice. I thought that was a neat concept to kind of give it some weight on the end. And I you like know it. who does um, more color work with cables is Star Athena. Mm -hmm. For her sock patterns yes. are more interesting. I think like she's that. getting ready to start her new club too. Oh, cool! I really like her. In fact, one of the things I was thinking about casting on for my just um, carry around carry around project was those m mitts um, glove patterns that uh, the gauntlets the gauntlets mm -hmm. that um, crafty pancakes. Yes, I can't remember what did. those gauntlets are called. Cupcake? Was it cupcake? Something like it might that. Might have been the yarn that she did it in. I don't know. We also wanted to show you Braided Mischief by Tiva Durham, which has a really interesting cable concept. So those blocks of color, those chunks of color, are created by added, switching to a different color. Yeah, they're essentially you're knitting a gray cabled scarf, and then just when you feel like it, you pop in another color just for one cable, and you go back to the gray. Here is a design by Nancy Bush, which is super popular on Ravelry. It's been in my queue for forever, and I love it. It's any any scarf. Any scarf, very pretty. It's kind of a traditional triangular. Here's the Lady Eleanor, which our friend Eloise has made and done gorgeous. And Leslie actually made this a couple of years ago. I did. Um, it took ten balls of uh, Noro. Silk Garden, and it's freaking enormous. I can't. I mean, <laughs> I can't even show you how large it is. And I did the tassel and everything. 
castle but um I very rarely wear it. It is super warm, but I will tell you one thing. If you want to learn entrelock and learning how to knit backwards, this project will force you to learn to knit backwards because you don't want to turn every eight stitches, which is what you would do otherwise. But um, it, was very, it was a really good way to learn to knit backwards, and honestly, I knit backwards every chance I get if it's stocking it rather than turning and purling because it's faster, it's more consistent, it keeps me on gauge. So that's a skill I'd advise you to learn. Then there is Vintage Velvet, which I think it sold so many skeins of Munch Touch Me. That's the pattern that everyone did out of the Touch Me several years ago. Touch Me is a chenille yarn that actually when you put it in the washer, it fuzzes up like velvet. And it's really cool. I can't do the velvet look. I don't know why. Yeah, but if you're into velvet, there you go. Backyard Leaves by Annie Modset like is in one. here. I like this one a lot. It's got more of a lace. This book really has it all. It's got entrelock, it's got color work, it's got cables, it's got lace. And there's a lot that we're not we're not going to show you every single pattern in the book, but it has a lot of very different things that maybe you wouldn't knit it exactly as it's written, but it would give you ideas for your own. It's got crochet. Here's Retro by Lily Chin. It has beads in it too. It's very yep. pretty. I like that one. It would almost make me want to crochet. There's a, some beaded scarves in here as well. And then my favorite part of this book actually was there's a designer notebook section and it goes through like choosing yarn to design with, needle sizes, different stitch patterns, how to locate stitch patterns, how to design event essentially. And that's a good, I'm going to say 15 pages, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 pages in there. So if you're thinking about becoming a designer, a scarf's a really easy, simple way to go. And this gives you the information that you need to become a little bit of a designer. This is a book that is in a series. This is my favorite one out of the series, it is though. Too. There's wrap style, There's um, color simple style. style, color style, um, lace style. There yeah. was a whole series that they came out with over the span of around five years. But this, the original one, was my favorite. So I thought I would review that for y'all. It is distributed by Interweave Press. It's an Interweave Press book. And it's so funny to see all these names as up and comers yes. and <laughs> nowadays. It's, Who doesn't know these names? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we thought we would share that with y'all. Um, so let's see. I think we've covered almost everything. I have one little thing left and that's it. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? I don't think there's anything else. That... I had a boring week. Um, I spent a lot of my week at home. I have a dog that just um, turns 15 tomorrow and she started having seizures. So I've been home with her most of the week. Um, it was actually very fortunate that we got the snow and I was off. So I spent a lot of time at home watching the dog making sure she was okay. So I've had a pretty boring week overall. That's why so much knitting got done. Yeah. And Kobe came over and played with me on Friday. He did. And he was, well, that morning, <laughs> he was so excited to go We had a great us. time. I was worried that he was just going to drive her nuts. But as is typical with children, when the parents are away, they're fine. So good. So if only I could get a little bit of that for a while. <laughs> it is what it is. So I had a question for you guys. I, like a lot of you probably, have a lot of FOs for like shawls or scarves or cowls or hats. I think or, I have 30 hats. Sure. I've got nothing <laughs> I love on hats. you. I think I've got two or three winter hats and that's it. But I have a lot of shawls. I have a lot of um, scarves and shawlettes. And I wondered how you guys stored yours because for me, I've got them everywhere. I mean, I've got them hanging over the back of chairs. I've got them on my dresser in my room. I've got them hanging in my closet in my bat bathroom. And there's got to be a better way. And so I was talking to Mr. Awesome this week, and I was I said, I, you got to build me something, some kind of like box with little sections where I can just look at it and say, okay, today I'm going to wear this one and pull it out, and everything is organized and pretty. Like a cedar chest. Yeah, but I want to be able to look at them too, like... You know, okay. how you store shoes in the little square box with the uh -huh. dividers. Kind of like that. But So I thought, surely somebody out of our 828 viewers has got a system that works. So if you have a system that you think would be, you know, a neat idea to 
pass on, please do. In the comments or on Ravelry or whatever, I don't, I don't care. I need to get organized. I like knowing where things are. Like earlier, Laura asked me where my um, Lady, Eleanor was. Lady Eleanor was so I could show it. And I'm like, crap, I don't know. It ended up being buried in my closet. So luckily I knew where it was. But I would love to have a place where I can, you know, if it's something I can hang on a wall and I can look at everything and then just pick something out and go. So if you have a storage solution, tell me what it is so that I can totally steal your idea and make it mine. <laughs> and that's all I've got. Okay. It's been, it's a quick one this week. We're at, because I can see now, we're at about 35 minutes. So uh, it'll be a little bit shorter than normal, but I'm totally okay with that. Cool. More time to play Angry Birds for y'all. <laughs> Angry Birds Valentine Edition came out. I heard about so, that. And I just got an update for Cut the Rope, too. Um, my internet at my house will not, my iPod Touch, I don't know why, keeps going off of it. It won't stay. When I come over to Leslie's or go to the knit shop, it's fine. So if you're one of my Words with Friends buddies, that's why I only play like <laughs> every three days because it doesn't work at my house. Yeah, you need Michael to come over and figure out why your internet is. Yeah, but it only pops off the iPod Touch. Everything else is... Hmm. Been pretty steady, so it's just it hates my iPod touch. It does, Evil. but that'll last for more than anything. <laughs> I was gonna say it's probably a blessing. And more spending in time, yeah, really. But uh, okay, well, I guess that's it. We will. Um, today is the thirteenth, so we'll see you guys again on the Happy Valentine's Day yes, for for those who, or Happy Single People Day or whatever day you want it to be. I guess um, you can find us at Facebook, uh, Plurk, Ravelry, is, yeah. Uh, Twitter, The Knit Girls, or our site, thenitgirls3ls.com. Um, our Ravelry group, of course, is very active. We have some great people, so please come and join us if you're a, a viewer and you haven't yet. And We're on iTunes. Yes, we are on iTunes. We've got some great We've got some great reviews this week. <laughs> this past week, so we love it when you guys have Including one from Biomage. Yeah, <laughs> who thinks we deserve 45 stars. <laughs> yes. And I would have to agree, but, you know, I can be biased. <laughs> So if you have the time, make sure to leave at least star ratings, but review, written reviews are great, not only for us, but for every podcast that you enjoy, because it does help to, for them to pop up on the pages. So yep, that's it for this week. We will see you guys again next week. Look at my wee little sleeve. <laughs> she has a wee sleeve. And, a gauntlet. <laughs> and we will talk to you guys again in a week. So until then, bye, bye y'all.